Hello and welcome. You're tuned to the League Up, your weekly thoroughbred preview podcast. Are we still a podcast? Are we a TV show now? It's probably a question for another day. Somewhere in between, I'd say. <laughs> okay. Well, what we are, what we have got to look forward to is Derby Day. Uh, at Tirapa, which is a little bit uh, different than the usual. Uh, I've got Paul Mawadi and Stephen Hunt with me in the studio here. Yeah, morning, boys. Are you right? You had to read that off the sheet, didn't you? I just had to check who it was. Yeah, right. Paul Mawadi. Yeah. Here you are here. Yeah, it's uh, both of us. Well, that makes a change of you being here, though. <laughs> <for your laughs> yeah, One Friday off in a year. <laughs> well, here we go. Uh, Steve, last week, Mara Mara. Mara Mara. Yeah, on a wet track, unfortunately, for the club. It's one of their bigger days on the racing calendar, but I think the two standout performances were the juveniles. Uh, Tokyo Tycoon just producing what he did in the Karaka Million a few weeks after the, uh, highlighting that. It uh, took a go and what a yeah, just a good turn of foot. Small field, put them away, very arrogant win. Uh, the question is, post that victory, is what price is he going to start? And it's a steamer in a couple of weeks' time. He'll be deep into the red, there's no doubt about that. But look, with the reshuffle with the field, who's going to come up against him? I'm picking it'll be a smallish field, just on numbers and what I'm seeing around in the juveniles in the previous two to three weeks. But look, he'll be a, a pronounced fave for the first group, one for the juveniles this season. And Zurion and the Breeders was very good. Mm. Just, she just keeps improving on the back of that Taupo win. It was a good maiden performance. She's only had two starts to date, so it's all on raw ability, and she got the job done. And But if you compare the two races, uh, the slipper, won by Tokyo Tycoon, rated 2.7 lengths superior to the breeders, but I don't really want to knock too much on Zerion's performance purely that she's uh, she's all doing it on raw ability and she's got a lot of upside. OK, let's get up to... Uh, BP there, who might be on track at Tirapa, BP. Let's go those Warriors. Wow, how... <laughs> well, well. <laughs> how about Levante? <laughs> how about Levante? Yes, uh, look, a very good win by Levante over 1,600 metres when taking out the old Chepo Cars Wait for Age Classic, and it was purely down to the jump, wasn't it? Levante putting herself in a stalking one-by-one -by -one position, and, and really, when she landed in that sort of spot and how the race was run, it, it was... It was hers to lose, really. I thought La Creek was very game in defeat when finishing into second position. She's not too far away, and, and we've heard from Katrina Alexandra over the sort of the, the last week or so after her defeat here in the BCD Group Sprint that maybe she is looking for 2,000 metres, and she sort of raced like that. And of course, we'll see her next week out of Pukakoi Park uh, in the Bone Crusher Stakes, which really does set up to be an, an incredible race with Prowess, who's getting to that race, the Fibberate as well, as we know, a Group 1 winner at that venue. So that really does set up Auckland Cup Day, and we spoke about the, the Group 1 two-year-old race there, the Sistema. So that's going to be a super day, but also back here at this venue too uh, for the ATR New Zealand Derby. Uh, we have an exciting horse in the race by the name of Sharp and Smart, and he's a deserved $1.70 favourite. Yeah, 100% he is after what we saw last time in a Herbie Dyke round, Sharp and Smart. Derby Day, great day, boys. One of the one of the great days, one of my favourite days. I'm just think the boys have put together a montage for us of uh, favourite derbies. You guys have put something in there. I think I started uh, with excellent uh, winning a derby at his third start. Who'd you have, Paul? Well, I think we've got uh, excellent right here. Haven't oh, we here third? he is. Here he is. Uh, th third start, excellent, fantastic effort. Uh, what a horse! Placed in a Melbourne Cup, Steve as well, didn't he? Excellent. Yeah, he did. He uh, underperformed in a Cox Plate, a red hot Cox Plate, and then a couple of weeks later was, you'd have to say, a little bit unlucky running third in Maccabi Divas third Melbourne Cup, I think it was. So. Here's Paulie. Here's yeah, Sailor Year, who uh, took an unusual route to the <laughs> uh, New Zealand Derby through the uh, Y Royal Cup. Uh, I dare say there wouldn't be too many that uh, went through the Y Royal Cup and then went on to win the New Zealand Derby, but Sailor Gear did it with David Walker aboard. Yes, here's Steve's. Yes, sign achiever. First filly to win it since Popsy uh, back in 1993, so almost 20 years between gaps. And James McDonald's first derby winner and was still a maiden in December and won the both guineas leading in. She was a short price fave and saluted. Chucks the hang loose to James McDonald and BP. We lost a fortune this day at the office. Yeah, that's why we brought it up, uh, and it being uh, <laughs> Jimmy Shoe. <laughs> Look, he was a, a, a three-year-old that I know that cost um, the, the tab a lot of money because he was just one of those horses. He knew how to win the big races. It, it was He was a special horse for me. I really did love following Jimmy Shoe. He was from the Hawks Bay. He was a runner that gave his all. I was remember his day in Cox Plate day where he nearly pulled off uh, the Cox Plate with JKB Riddell giving him a 10 out of 10 ride. Just happened that Craig Williams with Pinker Pinker gave an even more of a peach of a ride to win a Cox Plate. He was a super horse. And the other thing with that derby, that was actually my last derby uh, on track as a punter uh, in 2011. So certainly have been working uh, all through New Zealand derbies since and can't wait for this one on Saturday.
Yeah, well, no, it's going to be a cracker. I don't know. I, I thought you were going to pick the 2017 derby. Yeah, who won that? I can't remember what won yesterday. What about the 2017 derby? BP will be able to tell us. <laughs> 2017. No, yeah. Um, what? What is it? Come on. Ginger nuts. Oh, <laughs> ginger, ginger nuts. Ginger nuts. Oh, I see for Steve Hart now. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, we're fine. It's a long, yeah, exactly. We got there eventually. Wow. Yes, yes. One of your dad jokes. Carry on. Yeah, what, what a punchline. Uh, ginger nuts. Yeah, very good. We'll come back to you, pops. Uh, Maidener of the week time. Uh, where did you land this week? I was really wondering where Paul was going there, um, but anyway, we, we, we got the punchline eventually. Uh, so, right, well, speaking of Pauls, uh, we've got Paul David as our maiden of the week. Now, you might go back a couple of weeks in the show and think, hang on a minute, Insatiable was the maiden of the week with basically a little asterisk next to that maiden of the week saying Paul David. Well, Paul David was basically why we showed Insatiable's maiden of the week, because we wanted to be on Paul David next time to the races. Wow! Paul David yesterday won from an impossible position. You didn't want to be on, you did not want to be on, and then when it got to the middle part of the track, you were saying, I was on. Um, that was a really good win, and the horse that's finished into second position in B Beep uh, will be winning a maiden, you would imagine, at short notice out of the Clint Isdale stable. So, um, that should hold up, but yeah, that was a terrific performance. He'd been hinting at it at his last few starts, and he got it all right yesterday. Whoosh, Steve. Whoosh, you probably haven't had time to uh, crunch the numbers there from yesterday yet, but um, impressive on the eye. It was very good on the eye, all set up by a solid tempo up front, but no knock against the winner. And look, by a reliable man, normally you associate that progeny for 1600 and beyond, but winning over 1200 metres looks to be a speed element around this individual being by that sire. And look, he can leave the odd sprinter. You look at Ana Visto doing the the business over in Australia, etc. So uh, a little bit of speed in the dam side as well. Comes out of that fantastic Oak Stud family of sea change and keeper cruising. So that's maybe where he's getting that potent speed from in his early stages of his career. But definitely a horse to follow and, and the second horse. And Rodera was an impressive maiden winner on the card as well, over 1560. OK, guys, let's get to it. It's the uh, Auckland Thoroughbred Racing New Zealand Derby Group 1. But we want to touch on track conditions first, Steve. Uh, what are we playing on? Well, we're seeing there graphically soft five, and we've got Butch Castles coming on later in the show, and he'll be able to give us a, a bit more in a depth uh, analyst around the track. Uh, the rail's out two metres. Now, you go back to Legends Day, which is in the middle part of February, the rail was in the true position, so they've just gone out a couple of metres on that from that big day where that, that track got just cut up on the inside part of the of the lanes, so they've gone out two metres. Rail currently a soft five. We'll hear from Butch to see if they'll need to irrigate the horse between now and race day, uh, but the forecast looks spot on. OK, run us through this market because um, we all know who the favourite is and deservedly so after uh, this. Are we going to go to speed map first, gentlemen? Oh, Steve, run us through the speed map. Yeah, will go through the speed map and look, it's a tricky one. A lot of these horses, obviously 99% of them are going over a 2,400 metre journey for the very first time. And look, I've gone with a power jack to go forward. Whether he comes right across and takes that leading position off Warsaw and Texas who have drawn one and two there remains to be seen. But I think that's where the initial speed will come for the first two to three hundred metres. Uh, Sharp and Smart should get a gorgeous run. Uh, Ryan can just get him out of the machine and take a little bit of cover from Warsaw, Texas or possibly a couple of horses that will look to come across. Uh, full of sincerity I think we'll use a little bit of speed as he did in the Avondale Guineas. I think Wytak has drawn the best gate this preparation. Uh, he can sit a couple of appears closer to what he has been in previous starts. Uh, Cruise Missile Rockburn, I've got them in a midfield range. I, I'm just not sure where they land. They they have tactical speed to show uh, a little bit of intent for the first two to 300 metres, so they could go forward and take those wide gates out of play, or they might just take that neutral position. Uh, Jafira, Dynastic, Savoir and those middle gates should default back to the last third. Uh, Mark Twain has little to no gate speed, so he'll be back in the last third also. And Desert Lightning, the second fave, should get a nice run just forward to midfield. But look, Tempo's an interesting one. I'm not sure how hard they'll go, uh, whether there'll be a bit of speed mid-race, and from a few horses looking to make a move from back in the field, but you're always sticky uh, to, to know exactly where it's going to come from in the first two to 300 metres. Yeah, OK, run us through this market, Steve, because um, we, we know who the favourite is in the Auckland Thoroughbred Racing New Zealand Derby is. Sharp and smart and well back commodity, $1. seventy. clearly the best bat runner, holds 75% of total turnover for the first, what, 48 hours of trading. 
Look, he's, he's not going to start any higher than a dollar seventy from from what I'm predicting, from what I'm seeing in the trading assessment. But a dollar seventy, that is a that is his original price, and he remains that quote currently. Uh, Desert Lightning out of turn seven fifty out to eight. Whitech also out of turn nine out to double figures ten. Mark Twain's been the best back run in that middle market. A firm just in the last hour or so, Friday morning. If you're watching the show live, fifteen into twelve. Dynastic fifteen out to sixteen. Then you got the you'd call the Rankies. Uh, Savoir Fiat at $31, Warsaw also at that same quote, Cruise Missile, Devil Doom at 41 each of two. So uh, a little bit of speaking around the middle market, around Dynastic with that OP boss and Mark Walker factor, Mark Twain, the firmer. But overall summary, the best back runner is the clear favourite in Sharp and Smart. Yeah, he is getting a particularly well back BP and we might as well go straight to have a look at his Herbie Dyke win because it was extremely impressive and he deserves his $1.70 quote, doesn't he? Oh, he does. I mean, he, he's a horse who was super against the older horses. Uh, look, an unthinkable victory really wasn't it by him with the extra ground he's covered. We know he can stay because we saw it as a three-year-old in the spring because he what, he ran a, a great second in the Victoria Derby over 2,500 metres. Here he is covering uh, more than the 2,000 metres and still winning and, and beating home Campionessa, a wait-for-age winner uh, in the Flipperade and Wild Knight was there too as well, fighting on and Look, it's just everything you'd want to see from a horse who's preparing to come back to the same venue over 2,400 metres, and this time uh, up against his own age group uh, in Sharp and Smart. So look, 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 it's 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 all there for him, isn't it? Uh, the speed map is interesting uh, because you look at that and you think, well, there doesn't look to be a lot of speed. Surely they're going to go some sort of clip. Surely there's got to be something from out wide or an injection of speed from somewhere. That, that, that makes us a truly run race. You'd hope so, and you'd imagine so. I mean, we've got 18 horses here. Um, you'd, surely not everybody's going to sit back and just and just watch the wheel go by. Uh, it, it, there's got to be some sort of speed. I don't know where it's coming from from out wide, but you'd imagine that there's going to be a horse from out wide that's going to try and push forward and put themselves uh, into the race somewhere. So, and I think that would help the race too, wouldn't it? If, there, if there's a good you know, genuine speed there that can help all horses uh, into the race. And yeah, let, let, fingers crossed it will, but look, it's a derby, surely. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, you, I think there'll be an early crow market too, Paul, as well. First for the post, so that could be interesting. A very, very interesting market, yes. Yeah. So if you are one of those punters who likes those sort of featured markets, um, I, in fact, I think we've got the early crow up uh, already. Um, so if you do like those sorts of things, um, I get it. I'm just trying to have a look now to see who the favourite is. Uh, who have we got? Sharp and Smart, ten dollars to be the mm. first pass of the post. Uh, oh, what have we got? Jack. Texas at six fifty. Cruise Missile at six fifty. Oh, oh, par with Jack. Uh, the three fifty favourite to be the early crow winner, first pass the post, first time round. Okay, very interesting. I mean, he draws perfectly in four steep Sharp and Smart as well. Just picks himself, doesn't he? Normally with the favourites into a derby, you're looking for some negative. Quite often it can be the distance. Dragon Leap, a few years back, there was that query about getting 2,400, even though he had the class edge over the main rivals and winning key lead-up races. But you just can't find a negative around Sharp and Smart. Um, look, on paper form, he's unproven at 2-4, but we know he runs second over 2,500 in a Victorian derby, so a little bit misleading if he's just working on paper form. He maps well. Ryan Elliott comes on the back of winning a Group 1 last Saturday. He knows the horse inside out. Astute trainer who knows this horse better than anyone. Um, and he, ke he should be keeping it uh, improving in terms of well, his ratings. Again, he's 32 rating points ahead of the next best in Desert Lightning. Um, yeah, it's just hard to knock him. It's just around the price. It comes down to what price you're prepared to mm -hmm. take. As I mentioned, p punters are happy to take the dollar seventy currently in the first what, couple of days of trading. Look, I can see him starting at $1.65, $1.60 with that Aussie profile also, and that's suggesting he wins the derby out of 10 times, six occasions, and that's probably fair enough. Yeah, OK, Paul, let's talk about the second and third favourites because they fought out in Avondale Guineas last time and Desert Lightning, Whitehack, and actually Warsaw as well was very good. There's a heap of them here, to be fair. Yeah, there's a whole, a whole lot uh, in this derby field that did go around in the Avondale Guineas, and, uh, and it's been a good um, sort of a lead-up race. I think six of the last 11... Or 12 uh, winners of the uh, New Zealand Derby have, have come out, have won the uh, Avondale Guineas. So it's a good race to follow. And as you say, the two that uh, went uh, hammer and tongs down the straight were Desert Lightning and Waitak. So um, you, they wouldn't have lost any admirers after the run here. 
um, and Desert Line. He just um, outfought, out toughed by Tech. And I think um, Desert Line had been really, really unlucky, like the two or three starts uh, prior to that, and deserved a, a wee bit of a break. And finally got one there. So um, I don't know, Desert Line. What is it at the moment? Uh, Eight dollars. BP. They sort of cleared out those two in the end, didn't they? They did. There's a number of good runs in the race, as you said, um, and, and I think they're horses that you can entertain having a top four bet on or maybe looking towards that do-it-yourself power play where you can find some horses in, in a top ten market there and, and formulate your own power play. So I, I think that race is good from that point of view. Horses like Warsaw, Jafira. Uh, Jafira was very good. Last uh, 200 metres was the fourth fastest, but uh, was very close up to the fastest uh, last 200. And if there'd been a shower of rain, he might have been a, a genuine, real rough hope. So I think there's a lot of horses there. The Deviledom, uh, he's finished 60. Sort of just lost the back of, of, of Desert Lightning when, when, when turning for home. And the full cup blinkers go on. That might be able to sharpen him up and, and keep him in that, in that straight line. And he goes around at a big price. Desert Lightning, you're right. I mean, he's a horse that has just been bubbling underneath, and he nearly won a Group 1. We all know that. He nearly won the 2,000 guineas when missing by a bob against Pierre. He then ran super in the three-year-old Kanaka Classic uh, in, a, in a top run when, when weaving in behind horses, a race that was won by Prowess, and then he was able to cap it off with that, that particular run. We've heard from Peter Williams. He look a little unsure about the, the 2,400 metres, but I think he gets the right run to be able to see out of 2,400 metres at the same time, though, doesn't he? He gets a very soft run in transit. Could be similar to that. And you've got the right man aboard who knows how to win a derby. He's won six of them, uh, has Vincent Colgan. So uh, he's a deserved second favourite with what we've seen at his last start to the races. Yeah, 100%. Look, a couple of interesting runners, that the fourth and fifth favourites here, guys, and Mark Twain and Dynastic, who come through different form lines. First, having a look at Mark Twain here, Steve. I know you've got a little bit of a soft spot for this one. Yeah, I do. Uh, I've jumped on the on the bandwagon late around this horse. Uh, I know a lot of people punted this individual even prior to his maiden victory in the Central Districts earlier this season, but this was a good effort. Look, the last 600, nothing flash. But they did go at a fair clip, so the best day I won on this occasion. The class rating was solid, 1.7 lamps above par. Uh, I'll bring up later in the show normalising all these lead-up races and where they sit in comparison to the Herbie Dyke and Sharp and Smart's rating and class rating. But look, back on the horse in terms of Mark Twain, he has the pedigree. He's by a Melbourne Cup winner and shocking. You go back to the first and second dam, you see Pentathon and also um, Pentathlon, mm -hmm. who are both Cup horses out of the John Wheeler stable in the last 10 to 15 years. So on pedigree alone, he is the one standout that should be loving the 2,400 metres. The only negative around him is he'll be tempo related. He's a horse that has no to little gate speed. He's definitely going to be back in the last third and he'll rely on that solid tempo and he'll be giving at least a few lengths to sharpen smart come the last 600 so look Warren Kennedy he'll know that he'll know that Warren he would have done his form and know where he'll have to be at a vital stage of the race and assess the tempo mid-race to see where he needs to be and when he blends into the race but he definitely has the two four advantage Mark Twain and he is the one horse that punters have identified 15 to 12 in that middle market. Okay what about Dynastic Paul uh, I reckon this horse might be bubbling under the radar a little bit that's one last time in a 75 at Mudda Mudda very good indeed uh, and maybe just being the stepping up over grounds actually been the key for Dynastic. Very much so and how many times have we uh, come on the show and looked back to the uh, previous week and gone Mark Walker, Opie Boston, $15, $16, how did we miss it? Yes. So uh, you certainly, at the odds, you certainly have to give Dynastic uh, a really, really good chance and as you say, um, stepping up over distance, this, this does look ideal so um, I hope we're not looking back next week and saying we, ourselves. we missed again. <laughs> uh, but it's very, very hard to look away from the top of the market. How did Dynastic rate there, Steve? Because I, I just think it's had a couple of runs over ground and both have been good. He's improved again there. So I, I think he's... I think there's a sense of timing chance. about him. Yeah, there's that's what I'm saying. There's a sense of timing around saying. him. Yeah. Uh, he's looking to hit... Some PBs in particular, this preparation is a three-year-old. He's a little bit off in the spring. Uh, wouldn't it be fantastic to see a Karaka million winner... Yes. Go out to win a classic race, a Derby or an Oaks, and be something. well, we've seen Miss Finland do that a few years ago over in Australia. She won a Golden Slipper, and then in the spring won the Victorian Oaks. And look, he'll have to do a similar thing here in Dynastic. And look, in terms of rating, he's fractionally a little bit below uh, Mark Twain. But again, I'll bring up that graphic shortly. But look, he, he's he's a genuine middle class or in that middle range bracket in terms of prices and 
one you have to include in top three or four. Yeah, OK. And one other replay we want to have a look at, BP Texas, winner of two of its last three. Uh, this was a strong effort in rating 65 company and probably can't be discounted even though it's out there at $31. Yeah, and look, we know that this race has paved the path for those that want to get into uh, the, the New Zealand uh, derby and, and, and this is a horse that, uh, like Pinarello, Pinarello won this race uh, and then got into the ATR New Zealand derby and, and we know what Pinarello did. He didn't quite perform at his best in, in the New Zealand derby but he went on and won a Queensland derby so uh, there, there's always been horses that have run well in this that can propel themselves uh, into the race. He has a low draw, he plays a part in that early crow. I, I, I think he's one of those horses you could look at uh, from his barrow draw of two that he will look to take a, a forward position. Um, not sure if he's the actual leader but he could be um, so he's one of those horses you could look at there in, in that particular market I, I think there's a couple of ways of trying to to play into this race just just quickly on Mark Twain I, I think he's the horse that punters have identified already $15 if you think he can run a great race and, and potentially run second if you if you are right in the sharp and smart camp there's a couple of ways of looking at playing him. There is a favourites out market. Now, he's currently in that favourites out market, and I think he has been a mover as well, but just double-checking his price. Now, he's 5 50 in that favourites out market. Desert Lightning is $3.80. Now, as I said, if you're in the firm belief that Sharp and Smart can win the derby, these are good markets to play into because they're a little bit more than the top two. Uh, so top two market is 4 20 around Mark Twain. Yet favourite out market, Mark Twain's five dollars and fifty cents. Uh, so there's a, just a, a, a little way of playing it. Obviously, the top two market is shorter because look, there's no guarantee. Sharp and Smart might run third, um, uh, and Mark Twain might run second. You'd get paid out in your top two market. But if you're in the Sharp and Smart camp and you're looking to try and find an investment, I thought those two horses at three eighty and five fifty in the favourite out market just presented a bit of value and certainly if, you, if you're not getting turned on by the 170 of Sharp and Smart winning the race. You know, I, like that, I like what BP's thinking there Paul, um, you have something, is there anything more we need to touch on with that favourite out market or any other horses we haven't mentioned here that we should be? Uh, maybe Devildom, mm. haven't really, I, I know BP touched on Devildom. What about the last run, six there, it wasn't too bad was it? It, it wasn't the worst and the run before that in the Waikato Guineas um, I, I thought was very very good in fact I think Steve and the boys um, dragged him in in the uh, futures market after that run to around, I think he was into around 14 or 16 dollars in that futures market deviled him um, and obviously with the wide draw uh, we're getting 31s yeah. uh, now in the final field of women and, and that does interest me um, and well there's a couple, I'd like to have deviled him in a little uh, sort of power play. And oh yeah, do Maybe the, boy, the boys might be able to do something. Um, they've I know they asked me and they asked BP mm -hmm. um, for a, a couple of, uh, to throw a couple of horses together mm -hmm. and they'll put them in a uh, power play for us and then What's they'll yours? boost it. Well, okay. Yeah. What's your power play? My power play is in the Dar in New Zealand Derby mm -hmm. and I, I like a couple of the stable mates. I, I like Jafira or Jafira yeah. and Devil Dim, both, both to finish top four. <laughs> You've got an idea of price? It'd be pretty juicy. I'm hoping we get around the $40 mark. <laughs> Crikey. Yeah. Okay. If you thought Jimmy Choo was bad, watch yeah. out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, obviously the bookies don't respect me, they don't respect no, BP, no, yeah, so they've right. asked us to throw a couple of horses together. So that's, I've gone wide of the mark. Okay, the BP's is a little bit later on. Steve, Steve what about uh, final thoughts here in a derby? Wh wh which way are you going? It's hard to get away from Hard tip against uh, Sharp and Smart. Um, Again, I've talked about his price, potentially SP, somewhere between 160 and 170 for the favourite. Outside the favourite, Mark Twain, I've been a big fan of this horse mm. in, its, in its last couple of starts. Um, again, it's price sensitive. Where, where, where does his price stop? Um, look, I think it's almost bottomed out at the $12 price, but as I mentioned, $15 earlier in the week. And Jafira, definitely want to include Jafira in exotic bet types. He was on one rain halfway down the straight in the Avondale Guineas. It was a sprint home. They rated well above par for the last 600, so it suited horses with momentum. And in the first half of the race, Jafira was in the last two or three coming around the turn. As I mentioned, was on one rain for the first half of the home straight. And then you watch its work in the last 100 and then the following 200 metres past the line. He was right up where the leaders were, Jafira. Apparently coming out of the stable, he's working as good as his stable mates who are at the pointy end of the market or stronger up the bidding ladder so yeah I think Jafira is the knockout chance to, to
to, as I say, spice up exotic bet types, trifectas, quinellas, first fours, etc. Okay, I'll put those two stable mates together because Lance O'Sullivan and Andrew Scott have won the last two derbies, so they're okay. going all right. Yeah, <laughs> he's by Efrage. He's, yeah. he's left the derby winner out of a master craftsman there, so Pedigree suggests two, four, no dramas. Okay. Okay. It's very hard to look pa past sharp and smart, yep. but we did have a very, very short price favourite last year yep. who didn't quite get there. No, you make a fair point. So I, I'm, I'm not trying to turn punters away from Sharp and Smart because he's obviously, the, he is the class. I mean, it's a classy feel, but mm. he's right at the top there. So You think um, there's still a little bit of value about the things, potentially? You know, strange things can happen in a New Zealand derby. Um, and I know that Ryan Elliott took all the luck out of it in the Herbie Dyke. Mm. There was, he wasn't going to get blocked for a run where he was. Mm. In fact, Sharp and Smart probably ran close to 2,400 than 2,000 in the Herbie Dyke. Yeah, so. Cool. Yeah, I'll just, uh, no, well, I'll, yeah. I respect that ride. Yeah, I kept there. Yeah, rode the road like the best horse, as they say. Yeah. Look, you talked before we quick, get back to BP quickly for his final selection. You talked about those uh, that, gra that graphic you had about the Derby form lines normalised to open class. And how does that stack up? Steve? Okay, so these are the five key winning performances leading into the Derby. So you got the Her Herbie Dyke there. When they're all neutralised or normalised to open class, sharp and smart. The Herbie Dyke rated two and a half lengths above open class. Then you look at the Avondale Guineas Desert Lightning, the current second fave, minus 1.6. So the differential of 4.1 lengths between the Herbie Dyke and the Avondale Guineas. Then you're looking at these two horses in the middle market, Mark Twain rated 3.2 lengths below open class, Dynastic minus 3.3 lengths, and then Texas, uh, a few more lengths in behind that at minus six. So if you're just assessing it on raw figures, in key lead-up races leading into the derby, Sharp and Smart has roughly four lengths against his opposition. Gee, that is interesting. OK, we're deserving of his $1.70 quote. Then, BP, we'll just come back to you and you just uh, summarise uh, what we need to know in this year's derby. Sounds like you might have Mark Twain in your numbers somewhere. Yeah, certainly do. Yeah, look, I, I think there is a lot of chances uh, in this race that can fill that top four position. I mean, look at the number of horses we've covered off there that where we believe could be roughies. Just a couple of other horses. Look, Opawa Jack's an interesting horse. We, we threw him out there as a chance maybe of, of being the, uh, the, the leader first time past the post. Look, he is a horse, who, as you mentioned in your uh, graphic, that your derby favourite there, Paul, in Sailor Gur, 2008, coming through the wide or couple. This horse did exactly that too, by fin finishing in the third position in the wide or cup. Uh, did Opawa Jack uh, in behind Rapid <coughs> Falls. Uh, I think he'll stay all day. He, he's a horse that will give you a sight, so he's probably one again for those DIY punters that just need to be included. I, I do like Dev I think he's a horse that can be one of those roughies that can finish into the money. Sharp and smart on top. But if you don't like the dollar seventy, you don't have to back him. You, you, if you think he can win, you don't actually have to back the dollar seventy. There is so many other ways to, to have a bet in this race with all the different options uh, floating about with those DIY power players or the favourite out and all those sorts of markets. Um, so sharp and smart, Desert Lightning, Mark Twain, and Devildom uh, is, is is my ruffy in the race because I, I think he will stay all day and he just needs that right sort of run up front for him to finish strongly over the top. So I, I thought he was a, a nice sort of top three, top four chance as well. No oh, exciting race. BP makes a good point about how you can bet into it. And Paul and BP got deviled him in the numbers at, I think, $41 currently. So that's going to be of some interest. going to be a cracking Auckland Thoroughbred Racing New Zealand derby. And Sharp and Smart will be awfully hard to beat, stating the obvious. OK, guys, race number five on the card uh, is the uh, Vertical Logistics Mufasa Stakes over the 1,400 metres, Steve. Who's our favourite here? Must about uh, Maven Bell, should I say, the filly. Uh, well back commodity early doors as well, uh, Thaddeus. $3 flat was the original price on Wednesday, now trading at two seventy. In front of in front of Master Brutus at seven fifty. A matter of honour, just a little bit soft first up there, take note, eight fifty out to nine. Sir Sterling, twelve into nine, so firmer in that middle ground. Con uh, Cognito's been well found at ten dollars flat. Uh, Mezzalino at eleven dollars shares the same price if I choose you in Niance. The Intimidator. Just out a couple of turns, 10 out to 12, and then the second division, Luella Christina at $21, off an original quote of 18. So, uh, look, a couple of firmers, one being number eight and Sir Sterling, but again, overall summary, they're very keen on the favourite here, Maven Bell, dropping back from Wake for Age Group 1 Sprint uh, a couple of weeks ago, 3 into 270. Yeah, fair enough too, BP. No one was beating Imperatries uh, in the BCD Sprint last time, but... Maven Bell, a creditable fourth, and was extremely well back to boot. 
year and what, what a run it was uh, to get within seven lengths uh, of uh, Imperatriz Babylon Berlin as we know is a horse that uh, is going to be a big chance uh, on the weekend as well and Look, she's a Group 1 winner. We, 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 we know that as a two-year-old, and, and I think she's going to be awfully hard to beat here on, on the weekend, and already there's been a price move from her to, from $3 uh, to $2.70. Interesting to see that money about for Master Brutus, obviously, who got close, and Sir Sterling, who was in the same race uh, when, uh, of course, running uh, sixth in the Man's Law and then came out and was uh, a very good maiden winner following. We'll just hold it there for a moment, team, because as we see the market here with Maven Bell at 270, Master Brutus 750, Matter of Honour at nines, and Sir Sterling with that support at $9. I'm joined here by the CEO, though, and, and uh, Butch Castles uh, the day before the ATR New Zealand derby. Uh, how, how's everything going and, and, and the club and all readiness for tomorrow? Yeah, looking forward to it. Look, it's a privilege to be able to host this race. Obviously, we all know why, uh, with Ellerslie being reconstructed. So for us to have a race like this in the Waikato, first time we've had a million-dollar race. And uh, look, it just adds that little edge to it. Um, everyone's been really busy pulling things together. We've, uh, you'll see in the background, or I don't know if you shot Kim Pam, but we've got the Nation Bar set up. So looking forward to that being on the uh, corporate uh, mound past the winning post. Uh, the areas are sold out as far as corporate-wise. And I'm expecting a, a big crowd. Looks like the Waikato's going to turn on a nice day. Yeah, look, we had a great day here three weeks ago for yeah. Legends Day, wasn't it? And, and that really did set up for, t for tomorrow because we saw the key horses using that lead up uh, and especially sharp and smart uh, towards the derby. Yeah, it was a special day. Uh, looking back on, on that day, look, I think there was just so many elements that, that made it. Having those uh, past champions leading races out, I think, was really cool. Uh, having some really high-class uh, racehorses, certainly, I mean, that's what we do it for, isn't it? You can ha have all the, the fashion in the field, you can have all the palaver, but ultimately to have the very best racehorses uh, on the day is what it's about and, and seeing Imperatrice Prowess and Sharp and Smart do what they did that day I think uh, made it special and yeah look I think that Herbie Dyke is going to be the lead up for me. I, I, you don't have to be a genius to work out that he's clearly the one to beat and his work here on Tuesday morning was nothing short of outstanding. That's right with Sava Cat, who actually runs in the first race tomorrow as well, uh, Butch. <laughs> yeah, I had a little double when I watched them work. I was with Sava Cat was at 31s in the Oaks, yeah. and uh, I just took the shorts on sharp and smart, uh, yeah. and then Prowess came out. So uh, hopefully leg one's right, and I'd like to see Sava Cat do something really good in the uh, first tomorrow <laughs> and get through to the Oaks, because, look, to work with sharp and smart like she did was, was really good. I know it was ideal for what Graham and Debbie wanted. Uh, look, he's, a, he's an outstanding horse. We, we talked about it um, I think we went the way of the three-year-olds, didn't we? And, uh, look, he's already done it in Australia, and there's no reason why he can't do it again on the back of, I think, we might see something special tomorrow. Dangers? What do you see as dangers to, to, to Sharp and Smart? There's a lot of good three-year-olds in the race, and I think any other year we could have read a, an incredible way of trying to dissect the race. Yeah. But what, what do you sort of see him behind? Bad luck. Yeah. yeah. As simple as that, really. I, I look, I think he's, his rating points suggest he's uh, three or four classes better than them. Uh, his performances and his record suggest he's three or four classes better than them. And I, I just can't see him beaten. I think he's... <sighs> He's the best staying three-year-old I've seen in a long, long time. And, and with even luck, he, he just surely gets the job done. Yes, there's some really promising horses behind him, and I, I suppose I'm being a little bit facetious and saying bad luck, but uh, look, behind him, I thought Dynastic will take a great deal of benefit mentally from that win last week. And, you know, it's hard to do to give weight to older horses. It mightn't have been a field of champions, but for three-year-olds to give weight away is not that easy to do. So I had him as a genuine top five chance. Um, I thought... Uh, uh, the, the Desert Night Lightning's been been really good through the whole season. ytac has been good as well. But I just reckon he breathes different air. Mm, yep. uh, throughout the day, Sunline Vars, a key lead up towards the New Zealand Oaks. A big, solid field for that. Uh, good, a interesting crop of three-odd fillies this year, isn't it? With no prowess not going to the Oaks. Looks so open uh, heading towards that race. Yeah, Oaks is going to be a wonderful uh, betting race. Uh, just we saw it always the case that they tend to split up. Some go to the Lowland and some come to this race, the Sunline Vars. And, and we saw a, a couple of pretty good fillies, I think, uh, on Wednesday down the line at Awapuni. Valdesaldo was good in getting the job done. And I, I'm sure we'll see a couple stick their hand up here tomorrow in the McKee family, Sunline Vars. Wonderful uh, to have Stephen and the family mm -hmm. continuing uh, to sponsor the race named in honour of their champion and uh, look I thought Safura Girl, uh, is it uh, Secura Girl, was um, really good in running uh, behind Prowess, I mean Daylight was second but she showed good uh, resolve to, to stick on and run second so I had her as being pretty hard to beat tomorrow and if per chance somehow there were three scratchings Savicat will be awfully hard to beat on its work on uh, Tuesday morning. All right. And 
a winner uh, 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 elsewhere. Anything else you like? Oh, Babylon Berlin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that a forty. Got my brave shirt on here today. <laughs> um, look, I, I thought that there was some really good uh, rating races through, throughout the day. Um, they have come, but so they should be. What are they? Yeah. Sixty-five thousand dollar races. The open races are uh, seventy-five. Thought it was a pretty good Nathan's Memorial. A, a pretty good go racing Nathan's Memorial. It's really struggled that race yeah. um, uh, for. I don't know. It, it struggled when the Auckland Cup was on the Wednesday. Not many wanted to run Saturday, Wednesday. I think it's it's probably stacked up as, as good a race as that's been for a while. Um, and I reckon that Allen's got a pretty good horse in Tav Attack. Um, first time up this way. Uh, Mercurial will probably look to do what it did last time and go an extra 100 metres with no weight. But I, I just thought Tav Attack might be OK. So we might have a little bit each way on him. Maybe the Warriors in a multi as well, and we'll uh, yeah. put 100 bucks in each, eh? Well, it's Cameron's birthday today, so oh, it would be very nice of them to do the decent yeah. thing by their uh, by their uh, CEO, wouldn't it? Um, down in Welling. Look, uh, you know, I, because of my relationship with Cameron, I, I, I get to, to be a little bit involved, and I, I just get a sense that things might be a bit different this year. I know we say it every year and all that carry on, but, um, look, Andrew Webster is a breath of fresh air. He's, he's a fantastic human being, and, and he, he just seems to have... Got Got a really good culture circulating amongst them this year, and um, hopefully they can start with a win. Yep, all right. Thanks for your time, Butch. All the best tomorrow. Good on you. Thank you. Good man. That's uh, Butch Castles there. And what is going to be uh, a mammoth day here uh, in the ATR New Zealand Derby is set up, but the day itself, as uh, Butch said there, incredible betting races to look forward to. And as we were ch ch touching on, the move faster stakes is certainly one of those with uh, Maven Bell at that 270 quote. Yeah, exactly right, BP. Thanks to Butch Castles for taking the time to join us. Uh, look, he touched on the old man's or BP, uh, a, a good race because we've got a number of these competitors here and Maven Bell got the job done this day, I can say that probably, Steve. It was a good one. She was a short price fave. Um, she got galloped on mid-race. Whether that affected her ability to put this field away well, there's always going to be a, a question mark never or a question never answered, but um, like you see, Master Brutus running second here. They've really sprinted off a a two six hundred metre mark, uh, thirty six and change, which uh, really affected the horses back in the field. Um, look, there's been a bit, a, a bit of form come out of it, and uh, in, in uh, lower grade races. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what to take out of that race as a whole because I kind of feel Maven Bell was affected by the gallop, or she ran below her best. Even though she won, I expected her to put at least one or two lengths on that opposition. As good as a few horses there have been post that race, but. Um, again, she's the horse to beat, and she 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 gets a dream run here, BP. Because there's a lot of speed in this race. There's four or five that want to go forward, and from that draw barrier five, Opie Boss on the board. Look, she hasn't shown that gate speed she showed as a juvenile. She's been more neutral this time in as a three-year-old, but I think she can be forward of midfield, get a little bit of cover, sit maybe two two and a half lengths off that leading division, stalk them at the home straight and pounce but uh, there is a bit of speed in this race which will make it quite fascinating for the first couple of furlongs bp well i mean there's speed inside right, right from the inside to be honest with you and alfreston who comes back uh to, to the oh, goes up to 1400 meters but as we know competed at the 1600 meters so there's low speed and there's speed out wide so really with her barrier draw of five she, she should find a sweet spot uh, in the race over the 1400 metres. The Group 1 run was terrific. She was thrown out there by many as a chance they could even win the, the BCD Group Sprint. And she ran up to that expectation with the horses that she was able to beat that were in behind her uh, in that particular race, in, in, including horses like La Creek, for instance, who then went up to 1600 metres and ran second uh, on the weekend just gone in the old Cheapo Cars Wait for Age Classic. So there's a lot of good pointers towards her. Uh, and I find it extremely hard, to be honest with you, to tip against her. I think it's a good race outside of her though you've got horses like master brutus who was of course beaten in that race we've just shown the l manzor uh, the one little thing with master brutus that i that the, the nugget i took away out of this race as well leading up to it is sophia Orting just spoke about going left-handed just a, a, a touch awkward going left-handed and this was the very first time we saw him going that way and that's just something we need to take on. He still finished well. He ran third uh, from back in the field with Sons Dute up front, who, as we know, Steve had made this his, his maiden of the week a couple of weeks ago. And I, I actually really like both of these horses at the way that they've finished off because Neonce was finishing into that second position and she was very unlucky behind Maven Bell, not in the El Manzor, but in the race that was leading up to that race and, of course, on that Sunday meeting on the 8th of January. And then she's backed it up. Uh, I, I thought she was the one in the race 
where she could be a top three, top four chance uh, in the ons. She's drawn low in barrier number three. She probably doesn't quite have that tactical speed, but she doesn't need to because it's all around her anyway. Again, she might be able to find a good spot in the race and finish off late like she did on that occasion here three weeks ago. Yeah, it was a nice run. I wish it had won that day, Neonce. Uh, Mazzolino uh, is a horse that's been in good form, Paul. Um, winner this day uh, at Trentham uh, in the Desert Gold. Uh, have you got Mazzolino anywhere near your numbers? Uh, look, no knock against the horse, but um, her best performances have been on weather-affected tracks. Uh, I don't think she'll get that on Saturday uh, at Tarapa, but this was a super win uh, at Trentham in the Desert Gold Stakes, I thought. Um, so, uh, look, she may she may just run like this on Saturday uh, and you'll be very happy with the 10 or 11 dollars that the bookies are offering at the moment but um, I've I've decided to look elsewhere this time um, and I, I go back to that El Manzor and it is it's very hard to look past Maven Bell but I thought Sue Sterling who just could not get a run in the El Manzor and still once uh, once he did find the gap finished off very very nicely down the straight to uh, finish in sixth place and, and then has come out since and won at uh, Taranaki I think it was so Sir Sterling I see we've already taken a, a wee bit of action yeah. uh, on him $12 into $9 um, it's an ugly map it's an ugly map for Sir Sterling where do you sit, a, sit him in the map because he's drawn wide That's the there's problem. a lot of yes. speed underneath him he went forward at New Plymouth got the job done in a maiden race which didn't rate on the clock so you've got to trust the eye and he was green he laid out in the concluding stages so he's still learning the game but in terms of the map I just thought it was an ugly one for V Colgan to there's a couple of scenarios if he jumps I think they take their chance and try and come across mm -hmm. sit on or near the lead um, and just see what he's got down the straight if he doesn't then obviously they'll take him back hopefully there's a bit of speed on up front yep. and he'll be able Sounds to run over the top be. of them yeah no fair enough too uncle the intimidators in this market as well and that ran third and an Uncle Remus, Steve the Intimidator. Do you give that any sort of a sniff here? Well, he brings the A-grade form outside Maven Bell. You look two starts back, third and an Uncle Remus, and behind Wild Knight and Sacred Satono. And then also, uh, which we're seeing here, which rated really well, one, point, uh, one length above par um, in terms of the class. Post this race, he ran a fifth in the number one ranked three-year-old race this year, being the Karaka Classic. I'm just a little bit worried that they've... Uh, they pushed the pause button after the Karaka Classic and they've identified the Levin Classic as his main game or main target in the immediate future. He's had 42 days freshen up. I just feel he might be a run short. Uh, look, he's all set can be in the first half of the field and he always tries. But I just feel that their main focus is in a few weeks' time at Trentham. And a bit like Mazzolino, Mazzolino's had 35 day freshen up from winning at Trentham in the Desert Gold to now presenting itself at Tadapa on Saturday. I think those two horses that bring the best black type form outside Maven Bell into this race on Saturday. But I'm just wary that they've just had a few weeks off, uh, at least a month in between runs, and both those horses are working back from the Levin Classic, Mazzolino, and also the Intimidator. I'm big on number 13, Nyance. I loved her run at Tarapa last start. She was unlucky two starts back. I think that's the form reference. At Tarapa, it rated very high, and Nyance, off a strong tempo, was very strong late and was holding Master Brutus at the line. She just needs a pinch of luck, 1,400, no dramas, off that hot tempo over 1,200 metres at Tarapa. She was very strong in her concluding sectionals when you, it's comparable to a lot of horses on the day. I think she's the knockover hope at $11. But, look, it's hard to tip against Maven Bell, but, again, it's down to price. I'm with number 13. Can you tip against Maven Bell, BP? I think the horse that Stephen spoke about is the one that uh, can possibly beat her. Uh, and look, maybe we might put a little uh, something together, um, a little bit like Paul maybe, uh, and a little power play um, around Maven Bell and the aunts. Uh, that's, hopefully we can do that. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I think it has been done too, Paul. I see your power, power plays up. Yep, if you go down to the bottom of the card uh, for the uh, ATR New Zealand Derby, you'll see an additional race market. Both Jafira, Jafira and Devildom top four, boosted from 41 out to 51. Okay. We're, we're just, about to take the TAB down. You're not going to keep going on about this race, are you? Well, just quickly, Cognito, because <laughs> he is getting well backed at $10. I'm happy to take a set against the Wellington uh, yep. Guineas rated horribly. Uh, the Mascarinto race last start, albeit 1,200 metres, rated horribly. He steps up to 1,400, which is a, a positive, but I'm going to take a set against him, and that also includes I Choose You coming out of similar lines. I don't like her at 1,400. Okay, team, we're going to move on to race number three. 
This is going to be a world record preview. We're going to do this inside three minutes, starting now with this market. Go, Steve. Babylon Berlin, dollar forty-five into a dollar forty. Uh, one of the best bat runners on the card. Pundas not turned off by the short price, deep into the red. Bonnie Lass, second best bat runner. So they're betting in terms of the ladder here at four point eight. Our Ali Cat are eight dollars in double figures. The rest, multi time oscillator, sixteen dollars each of two. But Babylon Berlin. As BP would say, a multi special, an anchor. There's plenty of multis running through here, and we're not even on race day. I think last time I checked was over 2,000, so she looks to be a, an anchor in terms of those multis that are building up during the week. Oh, BP, they don't give away $100,000 races, but boy, she deserves it off that BCD sprint, off her run in the Telegraph Railway. Where do we go? Just, just give her the race now. <laughs> well, I'm sure Aidan Rodley will be saying, hang on a minute, no, 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 we've got Bonnie Lass in the race, uh, and we're also on 54 kilograms, uh, and as a Group 1 performer in terms of her placings, so let's not give it to her just yet, but uh, Babylon Berlin, I think, yeah, with, with the way that she's performed, and, and I, I, I love how genuine she is, and, and the fact that it's not just helter-skelter with Babylon Berlin now, we, we saw through the end of her four-year-old preparation, at times she just went way too hard in front uh, and she was either getting run down or she was or she was trying to cling on and she I just feel as though she's more tractable this year uh, she, she really has and and, uh, and that's down to Ben Foot because Ben Foot has been confident through all three of these runs uh, let's make no bones about it he, he thought he could have won all three of those races uh, and look how close he has gone uh, obviously not at his last start but she still ran super behind him period trees because she beat the rest of them but does those narrow defeats uh, through the railway and the telegraph uh, with, with, with her just being beaten by Imperatriz and Levante. So, yep, $1.40. Um, she's the one for the day that I, I'm sure punters will identify as, as the one you run through Maltese and the Warriors. <laughs> Paul, uh, $1.40, are you tipping against? I mean, our alley cat was good in the Westbury last time out running second, but what can we say about this mare? She deserves it, Babylon Berlin. Uh, she certainly does, and here we have our uh, alley cat running second in that race. Uh, but uh, as BP said, look, Babylon Berlin, she's playing less than the Warriors, so she must be a good thing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, do we need to say more? No, well, I haven't got time to say more, so we'll chuck it to Steve. Look, nothing against the Bonnie Lasses or the no. Owl Alley Cats at all. Mold um, Time's a good horse, Ossoletta's a good horse, Rosen Power's a very good horse, 100%. Steve, but I mean, just so well placed. Beautifully placed, probably one of the better placed horses outside Sharp and Smart with his ratings against his opposition on the day is Babylon Berlin, $1.45 into $1.40. Look, our alley cat, originally I had this horse a little bit shorter that Marie assessing at 1,200 metres is a slight negative. Oh, the race for her was seven days ago at Mudder Mudder if the track held up for our alley cat and the Lisa Chittick plate. So back to 1,200 is a slight negative. Uh, look, I think this is going to be a very static market with little change come close of the race. Okay, very good. BP, do we need to know anything else here or can we go on to the Sunline bars? How would you attack the race from a betting standpoint, I guess? I guess you start looking at exactors, uh, yep. things like that, because Bonnie Lass, you know, with what she's done, she's, she's, a, she's a cracking chance to be able to finish into that second spot. If you like something else, as you said, yep. there's a couple of other nice horses in the race that deserve respect, but, yeah, Babylon Berlin uh, at the 140 is, is just a multi-must. Paulie, one last word, no? Babylon Berlin, two yeah, words, two sorry. Words. Very good. Uh, but just back to the Mufasa, the bookies have put up uh, BP's uh, little additional market. Yep. Maven Bell to win, Niance top four, Boosted from eight fifty out to ten dollars. No respect for you, BP. Take them down. <coughs> ten bucks. A uh, bluey. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Beautiful. Bluey. Okay, boys. Last race we want to have a look at. And, uh, we've got about five minutes to do it. Unfortunately, uh, is the McKee Family Sunline bars of the twenty one hundred another traditional lead up to the Oaks, Steve. Yeah, as we saw in the Lowland uh, during the week at our Alperni, Securi Gill at $4.50 heads the call. In front of Sadaka at $6.50, Sephora at 7 Marvelous out of turn 7 out of $7.50. I'm a rich girl at $8.50, so what, we've got roughly six horses there, or five or six horses in single figures. Uh, the Woman King at $13 shares the same price with Kaidu's Pride and Cheval d'Or. A Savicat. Uh, as Butch uh, referred mm. to, needs a couple of scratchings to leap itself into the field at a $14 price. An elegant lady, best of the rest, out a couple of turns, 13 out to 15. There's no hard lead here, but Secure Kill, look, there's enough friends out there for the leader, or should I say the favourite at 4.5. Yeah, okay, competitive bidding market here, BP. Secure Girl 4.5, but there's a few ways you can attack it. She was good last start and second, but um, plenty of chances here. 
Yeah, look, I, I was really taken by how secure a girl ran here last time to the races. It was a race where, a little bit like the Babylon Berlin race, we spoke about it being prowess's race. She was definitely, you know, really, really short. But there was other ways to play it, and Shakira Girl was that way because her run was so good here, been unlucky when finishing fifth in the Royal Stakes. I like how positive they were. Cozzy put her in the race, and she was very gallant in defeat. Now, the horse that's finished into his third position here is Contagious, who's run a very narrow second, uh, of course, uh, throughout the week in the, the little Avondale Lowland stud. Uh, Lowland Stakes, should I say. So that's good form. I, I think it all marries up nicely for her. The three-year-old fillies, though, it's it's a real puzzle at the moment, trying to work them out and which ones you want to be on heading towards the Oaks. And I think this race, again, is a bit of a headache to try and work out in behind <coughs> which of the horses you, you're liking in terms of their wins, either in maiden grade or, or against the older horses. Kaidu's prize a horse I've been with right since Christmas when she was uh, going around up against Legato in an eight-carat, and I still want to be in her corner. I think she's a horse that can run a big race. Her barrier draw is not ideal. We're hoping for a little bit of pressure in the race where she can finish over the top of them. So I think she's a huge player in the race also uh, in Kaidu's pride, not just for this, but also looking at the Oaks in two weeks' time. OK, there's a heap that come out of uh, that uh, Royal, is it the Royal Stakes, Steve. The, the race, um, Sadaka yes. ran second in, Safura, yeah, Sakura yeah. Girl. Is that New Year's Day? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So we're going back a bit, but the, the key is that there's a lot of horses in this race. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Paul, uh, Look, there's yeah, one there's, I like here. Yeah, uh, to be fair, I'm a rich girl. Um, oh, I thought that was a super run uh, last time out for what fourth. Gets Andrew Adkins uh, to take the uh, reins. Um, currently eight dollars and fifty cents. Didn't quite get um, any favours in the uh, Royal Stakes, but uh, I, I did like that last start, and I also like uh, the look of Sacred Dream. Uh, down at around fifteen dollars at the moment. Uh, look, had to win two starts back, and there have been a number of winners who have come out of that race. Uh, Sacred Dream, Rotorua, uh, yes. won at Rotorua. Uh, Louisiana Man, uh, one on the synthetic. Uh, so I really like the look of Sacred Dream at the price at around fifteen dollars. Um, so yeah, they, I'm going fairly short in a number of the other races, so I thought we might uh, just <laughs> spread the net here. Just to weave it, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, sacred dream, I thought, each way, 15 and 450. Yeah, well, BP, you touched on uh, Kodu's pride there and that one at $13, so it's, it's a race where there are uh, plenty of chances. As they're backing a few here. Sacred dream, fabulous girls, see the light, the woman king. So here's another one to add to the mix. Yeah, look, and this horse covered a lot of extra ground here. I mean, Narajan couldn't quite get a spot midfield, so she had to cover the extra ground, uh, and, and she was still too good for them. Uh, and she's just been screaming out for ground. She really has been. This was 2,000 metres. She's a daughter of Mongolian Khan. She gets a little bit more uh, uh, tomorrow up to the 2,100 metres. As I said beforehand, the barrier draw is a little bit niggly. She might be a horse that'll have to go back and settle. And, and look, that, that's the case for a lot of these horses as well, with them going up to 2,100 metres. As so are we looking just to get back, settle in the run? So that's why it might really pave the way for Ben Foot's horse and secure a girl, because if she does find a position of forward and running and, and really relax, and we've seen how well she's run here in the, the David and Karen Ellis Phillies Classic, uh, she's a horse who, who, who could be very hard to get past. So $4.50 is the right price for her. I, I, if whoever wins this race, and, and we're so open with the Oaks at the moment, you would imagine that we're going to see maybe a move towards favouritism. Uh, if the winner of this race is very good, and if Secure Girl is, is that horse who's already rock hard in the New Zealand Oaks market, well then maybe she becomes a New Zealand Oaks favourite by the time this race is completed, if she does win. So yeah, I, I think we'll see a real change in the marketplace with whatever wins this race, because uh, it could be the key uh, form reference heading towards the New Zealand Oaks. Steve, Sakura Girl, just in reference to the Oaks, I mean. Yeah, I think you've got it spot on because there's been more questions than answers in the Lowland during the week, the way the race shape unfolded. It was very much a sprint home horse dominated or a race dominated by the first two in running. Um, there's two horses here I'm going to be backing. Mm. A nice one by three, one by four play. One of them is Kaidu's Pride. We saw that vision. It was very much a sit and sprint. She was a bit flat footed at the top of the straight at Topo. But her last 200... She recorded 11.62, which was comparable, almost identical, to what Zurion produced on the same day, over 1,100 metres. So her last 200 was as good as any on the day at Taupo a few weeks ago. The second horse is Cheval d'Or. It needs one more scratching to get in. Michael McNabb's booked, E2. Mm -hmm. 
It's now needing one more scratching. There's been one scratching uh, throughout the day. Suggests it's a chance to make the field. All three runs have been very encouraging. It's a nice turn of foot, has low tactical speed, but has a nice turn of foot of what I've seen in this first three runs. The step up the two one is, is ideal. It's by Al Manzor. Um, you look at the pedigree on the dam side, you've got a bit of speed just to just to balance it with Al Manzor in terms of pedigree. It's the Bostonian, Mufasa's family on the dam mm. side. I like this horse, even though it's a maidener. I love what it did at Tarapa and a maiden is that race. The form is stacking up with Rodera winning yesterday at Ottawa Park. So I, I think those two are, mm. are real progressive types and will be eating up the 2-1, which is the distance tomorrow. And if you like those two for tomorrow, then maybe get on a ticket for the Oaks as well. OK, I, you always get a bit nervous when they're backing emergencies before they make the field, Paul. And that's what's happening with Chevelle Dior, I can tell you, out there at around uh, $13. Where's your, one word here, who are you backing here in the uh, in the Sunline Vars? I'm a rich girl. I'm a rich girl. And Andrew Forsman. Righto, team, we've got to wrap it up. It's best bet time. We'll come to you, BP. Unfortunately, a scratching for you last week. They've got the mowers starting there at Tarapa by the sound of it for you, but um, where's your best bet? Yeah, that was really unfortunate with Hold the Press, wasn't it? Uh, late scratching at the Barrier, real late scratching too. It was almost about to load away. Um, I'm going to go Maven Bell. I, I th feel as though the speed in the race and where she pauses up is, is just going to be all perfect for her. We know how super she went uh, in the Group 1 BTC Group Sprint. Uh, Maven Bell to win the Mufasa Stakes race number five. Paulie, you're our star. Maven Bell going to be hard to beat into 270. Paul, um, where... Are you going for your best bet of the week this week? I'm going to Rapa, race two. It's over 1,300 metres. I like the uh, Nigel Tiley train, Midnight Mass. <laughs> uh, $6 currently. Uh, had a, has had a run. Looked very, very good finishing off over 1,200 metres in that fresh up run. Will be fitter for that. Uh, gets the extra 100 metres here. Um, oh, I think it'll be right in this. Gets a fairly handy uh, draw. Sam Weatherly should be able to uh, have Midnight Mass situated very handily as we come around the turn. And uh, I think if that's the case... Where do you find these best bets? That's what I want to know. You, you do your homework, get the rewards, I suppose. Got to do the homework. Steve, Steve, best bet for you. Where are you going? I'll go to Tarapa. The Open 15 race for Mercurial. You see here, loved its last start win over seven furlongs. He jumped, led and gapped the field, producing a strong speed rating of 1.7 lengths above par. Yes, he steeps up to open class that, mm. but on the back of that figure and dropping five and a half kilograms with the claim, I can see the son of Burgundy stalking the speed and pouncing in the home straight, Mercurial best of the day. Yeah, OK, that's it, boys. Show wrap-up time. Paul, Rob, what do we need to know before the weekend? Uh, what have we got? Well, with the New Zealand Derby, we've got all those do-it-yourself power plays where you can um, uh, put it together a number of horses. Uh, if you miss by one on a three or more leg uh, multi in your do-it-yourself power plays, uh, you'll get a bonus bet up to $50 as well. So another little... Uh, sort of diamond there for you to have a go at. We've got the bonus back blitz. First four races at Tarapa, Wingatui, Royal Randwick and Flemington. Uh, by now you'll know all the details around the bonus back blitz. Uh, what else have we got? We've got feature markets, we've got all sorts oh. of things. Oh, we've got the uh, Twitter poll as well. Now look, we've got so many power plays on the Tarapa meeting and the New Zealand Derby we thought would look elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Noble Knight down at Wingatui in race five, Romancing the Moon in race seven. Then we go over the uh, ditch to Randwick, where uh, Aft Cabin, uh, and Jackano. Uh, at Flemington. Taking on Legato. Oh. Yes, indeed. We'll get the uh, boost, Jack and I. Yep, yep. Leave a comment with your uh, selection. You'll be in the draw to win a $100 bonus bet. Last week it was at Proud XNZX. <laughs> Very good. Proud XNZX is $100. Bonus bet will be in his account. You can back Legato and get the boost, Jack and I back them both in the Australian Guineas. There we go. Imperatriz. Imperatriz. Sacred Satano in Sydney as well. Yeah, big day. Big odds on Imperatriz in the Canterbury Stakes. Mm, Good luck to the team way. there. Mr Maestro. Team Tiaka. Mr Maestro. It's a big day for the Kiwis and Oz. It's a big day in Oz. It's a big day at Tirapa though, BP. Thanks for your efforts as always. I know you're going to be enjoying your derby day as always. We'll see you on track, no doubt. Yep, can't wait, mate. Uh, we'll be here with Lee Thinnis, uh, Bevan Sweeney. Uh, Aidan Rodley's got a touch tournament, uh, over 50s touch tournament that he's uh, gearing up for, probably watching right now. Stop Thanks it. for mentioning that, BP. Uh, but so uh, <laughs> Bevan Sweeney will be here with us, and uh, Aidan will be back next week. <laughs> Very good. Oh, Flo, I'd love to see a bit of Aidan Rodley out on a touch field. That would be something to behold. Oh, Thank you, boys. Straight up the guts. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, boys. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Enjoy your derby day. Yeah, looking forward can't to it. Can't wait. Yeah, good.
Yeah, very good. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy your Derby Day. Back a winner, and we'll see you in seven days' time on the Lega.